Riverside is a platform that makes it easy to record remote podcast interviews and live stream in studio quality. And now that they've released new features like auto transcription and text-based editing, it is easier than ever to create high quality content with just one tool. But how does it work? And is it the right tool for you? That's exactly what we'll answer in today's video as I share a full walkthrough so you can see what it looks like to record, edit, and transcribe your content in Riverside. Hey, I'm Melissa, and welcome back to Wit & Wire, where we help creators turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. I've hosted over 100 podcast episodes, and I've been a guest on dozens more. So I've been on both sides of the mic and used countless remote recording platforms. But Riverside is one of the most popular options and perhaps the best all-in-one recording and editing tool for podcasters and online business owners. So here's what I'll be showing off in today's video. First, I'll talk about how Riverside's recording platform works, and I'll show you how easy it is to set up a studio, invite guests, and record remotely in high quality audio or video. After that, we'll explore the native editing options, including AI transcription and text-based editing to speed up your post-production process. Finally, I'll show you how to export your finished files for publishing. And as a thank you for being a loyal Wit & Wire subscriber, you can get Riverside for 20% off by visiting witandwire.com slash Riverside and using the code witandwire at checkout. I'll include that info in the description. And for now, it's time to get started. Up first, let's talk about the Riverside recording platform. Riverside uses local recording Recording to make sure that your final video looks as clear and crisp as possible. That means that instead of relying on Wi-Fi based recording, which can be choppy or unreliable, they actually use local storage on your computer and your guest's computer or device to save the best quality version of the video. Then while the recording is happening, they're uploading it in the background to the cloud, which means that by the time the recording is over, the full file will already be in your Riverside account almost instantly or moments later. It's also great because that means that if something happens during the recording, like your computer crashing, then Riverside will retain everything recorded up until that point since it has been continuously uploading. Now that we have a quick preview of how the platform works, let's log into Riverside to start creating. First, let's take a tour of the Riverside dashboard. When you log in on the left, you'll see your studios, and each one of these represents an individual podcast episode or a live stream. Then on the top right, you can change your account settings or billing info at any time. And if you click the question mark on the bottom, you can either contact chat support support or open up the help center with additional support articles. Next, let's create a new recording studio. So when you're ready to plan your next podcast episode or live stream, you'll click create new, and then you'll give this a title, usually the title of the episode. So maybe I'll call this Wit & Wire Riverside demo, and I'm going to do an audio and video recording, but you might also choose audio only. Now, instead of entering the studio to record right now, I'm going to continue to set up the studio here. You might choose to schedule this for a set date and time in the future, and you can choose to invite participants and you can set their role either as a guest, a producer, or an audience member. So if you add their email address here, Riverside will email this person with all of the details, including a link to add it to their calendar, or they can join in their browser. They don't need to create a login and they don't need to download any apps to their computer. I'm going to skip this for now and click create show. And on the next page, you can also see the option to click this link icon, and this would add the link to your clipboard if you prefer to email it to your guests directly. Next, it's time to go live with your remote recording in Riverside. So when you're ready to go live, you'll log into your dashboard. And then if I hover over this studio, I can see go to studio. And that's exactly what I want to click. On this page, you'll have the option to check all of your inputs before you enter the studio. So you'll want to make sure it's using the correct microphone, camera, and headphones. And then on the side, you'll type in your name. And I would strongly recommend that you use headphones and that you advise your guest to use headphones because it can cut down on the possibility of echo. If you don't wear headphones, imagine the audio coming out of your computer, like your guest's voice. My microphone could pick that up. So it's definitely a best practice to use headphones and to make sure that it's selected here as the speaker option. So once I'm happy with this, I'm going to click join studio to enter the room. Here's what it looks like with just one person. You'll also see I have a link here that I could copy to send to my guest if needed, or I could re-invite via email. And then along the side, maybe I would rename this as recording one, just as an example. Most commonly, you'll probably only have one recording per studio. But if something happens and you came back in, or if you hit stop, you could add a second recording file to a studio. You can also see on the side, I can see how my own audio is looking. I can see different buttons on the bottom. So maybe I would choose to adjust my mic, cam, speaker, or even share my screen if I was doing a live stream on YouTube. 
probably not a fit for podcasting. And then I'm actually going to enter the room as a second Melissa so that you can see what that experience would look like. All right, confusingly, now there are two Melissas, one computer Melissa and one guest phone Melissa, um, but I wanted to at least simulate what it would look like to have a guest. So I am going to click record and then we're gonna see a countdown. And I can see my audio and the guest audio are looking pretty good on the side. And now we are actually in recording mode. You'll notice right away there is a recording timer on the bottom. We also have a recording button on the top. And each of these images has a red dot indicating that this is recording. And this is also offering me the very helpful tip that the actual recording itself is going to be in higher quality. So remember we talked about the fact that Riverside uses local recording on your computer and your guest's device. And then you can see now here on the top, the uploading is continuous. So I can see as we are record recording, this audio file is being uploaded, but it'll look a lot crisper when we see the final files. So what you see here is just temporary. This is not the quality that we're gonna see in the final recording. So let's go ahead and click leave. Actually, let's click stop first so I can show you the difference. So when you click stop, you and your guests stay in the recording and you could chat and say goodbye and thank them for coming. And then when you're ready to actually end the full call, you would click leave and end session for everyone. This brings you back into the dashboard. You can see it's going to take just a minute to generate the transcript. So we'll give this a quick second before we move on to the next step. As a bonus tip, Riverside does have a mobile app that you or a guest could use to join a recording. So here's what it looks like. I already have a studio here because I clicked on the link from my email, the one that Riverside automatically sent. So if I click on this studio, it'll take a second to connect and then I can add my name here and click next be very unflattering low angle over here. I could then click the join button and now I am in the recording room. I personally don't use the phone or any apps for recording because all of my equipment is hooked up to my computer, but I thought that that was a tip worth mentioning. After your recording is complete, you have a few different options to edit your files. The first option is to download the files from Riverside and then use an external editing tool. But if you want, you can also use editing tools built natively inside of Riverside. So I'm excited to show you what those look like. Let's log back into Riverside and I'm gonna click on our demo recording. And here I see one recording. If I had hit the record button more than once, I would see more than one file here. But I would say most often you'll see one file here and you can click inside. At the top, I can see the transcript, which has been auto-generated. And I'm gonna come back and talk about transcripts shortly. Scrolling down, I can also see all of my different individual files from the multi-track recording. So if you wanted to use an external editing tool, you would click the high quality download button and choose if you wanna download the raw video or the raw audio file based on the type of file that you're creating. You can also click export at the top to export all of the tracks either to Adobe Premiere Pro or Descript if that is your editing tool of choice. So those are two different options. But if you wanna edit in Riverside, I'm gonna show you how you can do that by clicking edit and create clips here at the top. First, you'll be prompted to choose a size or an aspect ratio. So I'm gonna do a full length video, which is the 16 by nine ratio commonly associated with YouTube. Here is what the Riverside editor looks like. You can see the transcript has been auto-generated on the side and you have a couple of different options when it comes to editing this video. You can either select text and click backspace and you'll see down below, this actually edits the audio file by editing the inline text. Or if I click the undo button on the right, you can also use the more traditional approach of making splits, clicking backspace, or even dragging different pieces of this in order to edit the clip. So then if the cursor were here, and if I were to click spacebar to play, you can see that although I see the grayed out area, it doesn't actually appear in the final recording. Let me just click undo a few times. You can also see in the transcript that it has automatically identified which person is speaking because of that initial multi-track recording. So it is giving me different clips here, but if I knew I was looking for something specific, you can search at the top to find something in the transcript. So maybe I knew I said the word mute, here I can see it comes up in a few different places and you could either use that info to perhaps remove this part of the clip or even to create a snippet that you could share on social media. So the search bar is very powerful and super useful. I also wanna talk about a few editing features along the top. So right now we're doing a full size video, but you could change this to a one by one or a nine by 16, again, depending on where you plan to publish this video. You can also decide if you wanna see either both tracks or perhaps just one or the other. And you can see how that modifies what you see in the transcript on the side. 
I think this could be useful if you're creating a social share snippet, but since I'm creating a YouTube video, I'm gonna keep both tracks intact. Here under layout, you have a couple of options. So you can see if I toggle between the top two, it just changes if there's a gap. And if I change the background color, it's a little bit no more noticeable, I would say, between these two options. But then where I think Riverside really shines is these AI layouts. So if I choose the full frame AI, it will show me whoever is speaking automatically. And they use technology to even switch over slightly before the next person starts talking so that this appears to be like a natural conversation flow. These two AI views are the same. It's just a matter of whether you do not want to see the picture in picture, you want to put it on the top or off to the side. But all three of these have that AI technology to feature whoever is speaking in the main view and put the other speaker or speakers off to the side. Maybe I'll stick with this shared layout for now. And then the final thing I could do is add a logo. So just to show you what this looks like, I'm gonna add a retro ampersand. Here is the old Witten Wire logo. You can see how easy this is to drag around. Maybe I would put it in the corner if I wanted more of a watermark. Completely up to you how you would use that feature. By the way, when I hit play, you may notice that this video quality still appears pretty blurry, but the reason why is because the webcam itself is a relatively inexpensive camera. So as a pro tip, Riverside will deliver crisp video quality, but it will only be within the bounds of what your technology can do. So the microphone you use, the camera you use, those all have an effect on your final product. So that leads us to the final step. How do you export and share your recordings? In Riverside on the top right, you can click export to download this file to your computer. And then you can publish it as a podcast episode, a YouTube video, or a clip on social media. So if you've used this editor, you now have the full process from start to finish. And just to go back to the beginning, if I hit back a few times, we started in the dashboard, we created a studio, we then did our live recording by going to studio. Afterwards, we had our recording, we clicked here, we could have downloaded the files, or we chose to edit and create clips. We made a full length video, and then we modified some features at the top. We did our editing off to the side, and then we finalized our video with an export. As a final recommendation, any recording tool is only as good as the equipment that you use. So I'll include a few links in the description to the microphones and cameras that I recommend for online business owners. Overall, I think Riverside is one of the best end-to-end -end options from recording through editing and transcription for a lot of podcasters and online business owners. So if you're ready to get started, you can visit witandwire.com slash Riverside and use the code witandwire at checkout to receive 20% off. If you found this video helpful, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Wit and Wire for more online business tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might find useful.